Welcome to In An Instant, my name is Ben, and today we're talking about the new launch of Polaroid Duochrome Yellow Film. This breakdown is a little bit different because this product is a little bit different. This is the first special edition film release of this kind since 2017. Today, we're gonna talk about it, we're gonna shoot with it, and honestly, I'm pretty hyped, so why don't we just go ahead and do this. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. If you're a picture taker or general living human being, if so, glad you're still with us, you've probably heard the word monochrome before. It is an image comprised of only one color or none at all, usually black and white. Polaroid's duochrome film is a simple spin on that. It just replaces the white tones with a color, in this case, yellow. The reason Polaroid fans have been freaking their butts off for this stuff is because it was once a staple of the Impossible Project special edition rotation. They released duochrome variations like black and red, black and orange, and like the new release, black and yellow. Now here's the thing, I could do a whole like riff on Wiz Khalifa's black and yellow, but the, the issue being like, are we still referencing that song? I don't know, I mean, it's pretty old and me rapping on camera is definitely questionable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move on. As we arrive at our next location, um, just reflecting on the bike shot we just did, it's really interesting the way that Duochrome really crushes the tones and really brings that yellow forward. The first shot we took, the face was very evenly exposed, but the tones of blue behind Lauren and her face, you know, merged, and we really lost all detail on the face, so I really had to shape that light a little bit more, introduce more shadow than maybe I would normally do, and then we could really get those details. It came in really crisp, and that's the other thing about this film stock that's really appealing. It's that monochrome chemistry. So it comes in really sharp. Uh, it develops quicker, which is fun for this kind of shoe because you could start seeing whether things are coming in the way you wanted pretty quickly and you know whether you have to do it again or whether you have to move on. So that's been really fun. I think, you know, I think Lauren's having a blast. I mean, as far as I can tell. Yeah, she's, she's loving it. She's loving it. She doesn't even need to say it. She loves it. When Impossible Project became Polaroid Originals and ultimately just Polaroid, a lot of these unique special edition film types were no longer the focus of the company. The 2017 release of Duochrome Blue and Pink were the only remixes to the film chemistry we've seen under the newer branding, and it's got this beloved status as a result. People freak out for that stuff. Polaroid does release a lot of special edition frames, and I do love me some of those, but they aren't altering the chemistry for those packs. This 2020 duochrome rollout is something different, and it, it hits different. It's the type of film that spawns another avenue of creativity. It's changing the canvas, giving you something fresh to try, a little spritz of special sauce for your Polaroid pasta, and opens up the game to new possibilities. Polaroid as a brand and a company represents this hyper creative lifestyle and the people who shoot with it want to experiment. They want to make something unique. And Duochrome is like another brush to paint with. Oh, the similes and metaphors you get on this channel. I spoil you folks. This release is also an olive branch to that OG community who have clamored for more unique film types. It's Polaroid's way of saying, guys, we hear you, we're listening to you, we love you, and we're in love with you. So you gotta dig that element and the doors this may open for future film stocks. Now I'd like to throw it to a new segment on the show called You Asked It. So ask away. You Asked It is a segment where I throw up the topic or product on my Instagram, at the.instantgram, and you beautiful viewers can ask any further questions beyond the stuff I just discussed. This replaces the pros and cons segments for videos like this one, which would have been weird to have pros and cons for I me. Mean, it's, it's duochrome film. You either like that or you don't. But anyway, let's, let's, let's go get the iPad and answer some questions. 
All right, so we got like over 50 questions in only a few hours, so I had to pare these down. Um, I, I had to maybe merge some questions, but let's just get to it. So Tropin Jung asks, isn't this just a fancy black and white film? I mean, kind of, yeah. It's a, it's a remix of that black and white chemistry, but using the word just there is sort of undercutting it a bit. I mean, this is the first special edition film like this we've had in four years, so. I mean, I'm into it. Austin Smyther says, will duochrome film only be available for 600 type cameras? So this film will work in any Polaroid camera. It'll work in an I-type camera. It will work in an SX-70 with an ND filter. So when Polaroid releases something on 600 film, it's sort of a universal release. You can use it on any of their cameras. Posting to you, which is exactly what they're doing, asks, do you recommend shooting something yellow with duochrome like flower emoji, lemon emoji, beer emoji, and banana emoji. This is a really interesting question and it really all comes down to the tones of light a little bit more than the colors you're shooting. Uh, we did do a couple of tests where we shot things that were yellow, like this yellow building. And as you can see in the results, it's not like the fact that it was yellow actually has any real influence on what it looks like. It almost washes to a white in a way, or the equivalent of a white with yellow. It's really all based on tones and light and how that light shapes what you're shooting. This film so more or less treats every color similarly. Sasha Mano says, can you achieve a similar effect with colored lenses or filters? This was actually one of the more common questions. So if you put a filter over a lens, it's not gonna completely desaturate that image and only provide you with that one color. There are some filters like red, which kind of do that, but if, if you put a yellow filter over a lens, it's not gonna completely kill everything and only give you yellow. Some of those other color tones are still gonna come through. So duochrome is really the only way to accomplish this kind of effect perfectly, but you can get similar results with filters. Trisha Lim asked, how to get the best results out of shooting duochrome film? So obviously the word best is a little bit subjective, but in our experience, we had some really interesting differing results with duochrome. Overall, it was actually pretty easy to shoot with, but we did have definitely some images where the entire image felt a little bit more washed out than I expected. I expected there to be more contrast, and that definitely became like the theme of the day. We need contrast. You need some dark colors in your images, otherwise it's kind of gonna wash out a little bit into yellow, and you need shadow. You need dark areas that are gonna sort of go to black because otherwise you're gonna get a very even looking image that doesn't quite pop. So that's my recommendation. Look for contrast, look for lighting, bring some dark tones into your pictures because that's gonna help you a lot shooting duochrome. Ben Mueller Brown says, if I buy duochrome and leave it in the fridge, will it cover my student debts? <laughs> What Ben is referencing here, and great name by the way, is that people sort of hoarded duochrome blue and pink back in the day, and then flipped it for like absurd amounts of money later. And I don't think that's gonna work the same way here. I, I'm sure if they've just released this duochrome, there will be some more special edition film types in the future. So hopefully people aren't just like buying it up to sell later. Uh, even if it does cover your student debts and good luck with those. Abstract Polaroid says, what would be your favorite duochrome color? That's a really good question. I have thought a bit about this. I think I would really like to shoot with orange. I've never shot with duochrome orange. Orange is one of my favorite colors, even though we don't have any orange backdrops. Trust me, one is eventually gonna come. Uh, I think I would also really like to shoot with blue. Mocker Martin 87 says, what do you think is the best use for duochrome? Portraits, landscapes, etc." So once again, there's not necessarily a best way to use duochrome, but in our experience, I think we did have some really interesting results with close-ups. Like I was saying before, this is the crisp black and white chemistry. So you're gonna get a lot of value going up close and really seeing more of that curve because when you're further away, that yellow really starts to eat up a lot of the image. Film How You Like asks, were any Polaroid boxes hurt during the filming of the drop sequence? He is referencing the dropping of the boxes at the beginning of this video, and I am very happy to report none of the boxes were damaged. All of the film came out really well. Like I said, we had a really good experience shooting with, with Duochrome, and I'm really happy with our results. It's not something I necessarily thought I was gonna love, but I ended up kinda, kinda freaking for it, which is big for business. I mean, why not? We're doing it. Thank you for watching In An Instant. Go ahead and rip that subscribe button a new one. Stay tuned for more reviews, breakdowns, tips, shoots, all things instant. Bye.